Ambassador John, thank you very much for taking your time to do this interview. Um, Prime Minister Gaston Brown of Antigua and Barbuda has ramped up his week-long visit to China. He met with Chinese President Xi Jinping and Premier Li Qiang. The two countries also signed a number of cooperation documents during his visit. And he also visited Zhejiang province and Shanghai. So how does this busy schedule reflect on the development of bilateral relationship? Uh, thank you. It's a great pleasure. The schedule of the visit is a very busy one. It's a strong reflection of the vitality of the bilateral relations between China and Antigua and Barbuda, which comes from three dimensions. The first is the height. President Xi Jinping, Premier Li Qiang, and Chairman Zhao Leji met or held talks with Prime Minister Brown, respectively, sharing views on bilateral relations and the issues of common concerns. President Xi called Prime Minister Brown a true friend of the Chinese people, while Prime Minister Brown expressed that Antigua and Barbuda was willing to be China's most reliable partner and commended China's unparalleled leadership and the philosophy for world peace and the development. So it's fair to say that this visit has elevated bilateral relations to a new height. The second is the heat. Antigua and Barbuda is the first country in the Eastern Caribbean region to establish diplomatic ties with the People's Republic of China. Prime Minister Brown is the first Latin American and the Caribbean leader to visit China this year. This all demonstrates the profound friendship and the close relations between our two sides. As ABS, the Antigua and Barbuda Broadcasting Services reported, I quote, cold weather in Beijing, but very warm relations between China and Antigua and Barbuda, unquote. And the third is the breath. During the visit, we two sides have signed a series of cooperation agreements covering areas from the Belt and Road Initiative to economic development, from trade to transportation, from climate change to visa exemption, etc. Both sides have found many new highlights of cooperation. So this visit will not only enhance the high-level relations between our two countries, but also comprehensively strengthen the relations in various fields. The cooperation documents signed between these two countries during this visit has placed a significant emphasis on bilateral trade. So how would you evaluate the potential for trade between the two countries? And what are the measures to further facilitate bilateral trade in the future? Uh, the signing of several agreements about trade tells very clearly the great potential and strong need for cooperation between our two sides under the eight action framework of high quality joint construction of the Belt and Road Initiative and the joint implement of the Global Development Initiative. From the companies and the institutions Prime Minister Brown visited, we could see there are many new windows that might be opened for bilateral cooperation in the field of new energy, medicine, artificial intelligence, and environmental protection. To facilitate bilateral trade in the future, we have put at first place the coordination of our policies at a macro level. For example, the MOU on Economic and Trade Development signed this time has provided institutional guarantee for promoting bilateral trade. At the same time, we have agreed to join efforts to make full use of the existing platforms, such as the China International Import Expo, the China International Supply Chain Expo, and China and Antigua and Barbuda Trade and Investment Cooperation Forum, et cetera, and encourage more entrepreneurs to tap into each other's market. In addition, we two sides will further enhance communication in the fields of food security, infrastructure, medical and healthcare, and explore more opportunities for specific cooperation projects. Now let's talk about Antigua and Barbuda's pillar industry, tourism, which contributes over 60% of its national GDP. Now, China and Antigua and Barbuda have signed a mutual visa exemption agreement 
which will definitely make it more convenient for Chinese citizens to travel to Antigua and Barbuda, and of course, vice versa. So what is the role of tourism cooperation in the overall bilateral relationship? And are there any upcoming plans to deepen cooperation in this regard? Uh, the mutual visa exemption agreement between our two countries will absolutely provide more convenience for personal exchanges and give new impetus to bilateral corporations, including tourism. Tourism is actually a pillar of the economy of Antigua and Barbuda. It is also an important part of our bilateral ties. Last November, one representative from Antigua and Barbuda participated in a six CIIE the introduction materials about the rich tourism resources of the beautiful country were quickly collected by visitors. To deepen the future cooperation with two sides are now working on cultivating more tourism patterns and products such as chartered flight, flight plus cruise, and so on. In addition, at the China and Antigua and Barbuda Trade and Investment Cooperation Forum, some Chinese enterprises have expressed interest investing in tourism industry of Antigua and Barbuda. We all know that Antigua and Barbuda's tourism is particularly vulnerable to climate change because this is an island country. And Prime Minister Brown and Chinese leaders have stressed the importance of cooperation on together addressing climate change. Uh, what do you expect the two countries to do to further tackle climate change? Both China and Antigua and Barbuda regard climate change a vital area of cooperation. China attaches great importance to the concerns and needs of Antigua and Barbuda and other small island developing countries. And we have been having good cooperation in tackling climate change all these years. In the near future, two major projects between our two countries will be implemented. One is about China's support of some necessary supplies for the fourth international conference on small island developing states to be held in Antigua and Barbuda this May. And the supplies have already been shipped from China and now are on the way to Antigua and Barbuda. The other is about the support of equipment under the framework of South and South cooperation. During this visit, the environmental ministries of two countries signed the MOU on China aid to address climate change in Antigua and Barbuda, which aims to assist Antigua and Barbuda to strengthen environmental security. In the long term, as developing countries, China and Antigua and Barbuda could strengthen the macro policy coordination so as to better protect the interests of developing countries. The new energy companies Prime Minister Brown visited last week might also be the area of interest for future cooperation. The two countries have been cooperating under the Belt and Road Initiative, and one of the achievements is the reconstruction and expansion of the St. John's Port in Antigua and Barbuda, which was completed in 2022, and you were at the completion ceremony. Over the past year, how has this port helped with the development of local economy and helped to improve the life of local people? And what will be the future focus of bilateral cooperation in terms of infrastructure building? After the completion of the St. John's Port reno renovation and expansion, Antigua and Barbuda boasts the largest mixed cargo terminal in the Eastern Caribbean region, capable of accommodating two 10,000 ton cargo ships simultaneously. Since last year, the port has played an important role in the economic growth of Antigua and Barbuda. One example is its support for the growth of tourism. Last year, Antigua and Barbuda's tourism began to recover with plans for constructing more hotels. In terms of building material imports, St. John's Port plays an indispensable role. It is reported that customs revenue reached a record high by October last year. Another example is its close connection with people's livelihood needs in Antigua and Barbuda. By November last year, there was a remarkable 117% increase from previous year's figures with imported vehicles through this port. Looking ahead, the Infrastructure Cooperation has already two projects in the pipeline. 
One is the China Aid Low Income Housing Project, which is to address housing difficulties faced by local underprivileged families. Another one is the Water Pipe Rehabilitation Project that will help water being delivered to citizens for everyday use. It is evident that both projects will bring tangible benefits to the people. During the visit paid by Prime Minister Brown, he also witnessed the signing of a memorandum of cooperation between China Media Group and Antigua and Barbuda Broadcasting Services. And then he visited China Media Group's headquarters in Beijing. What is your view on the role of media cooperation in the bilateral relationship? And what's your take on the potential for cooperation in this aspect? The world has entered the year of information. By providing more professional, objective, and accurate information, media cooperation can promote mutual understanding and strengthen friendship between the peoples of both countries. It is encouraging to see that in recent years, the media cooperation between China and Antigua and the Barbuda has been expanded and achieved positive results. The M OU signed between China Media Group and Antigua and Barbuda Broadcasting Services and the visit of Prime Minister Brown to CMG's headquarters will definitely help to bring the media cooperation to a new stage. It is hoped that with stronger media cooperation, more real news, high quality documentaries and excellent film and television resources could be shared. People from both countries could have more opportunities to appreciate each other's natural and cultural beauties and to experience each other's social and economic development. This is CGTN Radio. Hear the difference.